Ladies and gentlemen, we're back today with a very, very important episode uh, because we have somebody who is doing amazing work on behalf of animals. Um, Dr. Diliana Filipova. How are you, doctor? Hello, Chris. Uh, I'm very excited to be here. Thank you. How are you? <laughs> I'm very good. I'm very good. I'm happy to have you because we're going to be talking about uh, what you do. You're the scientific officer down at the Arza Gegen Tierversuche, which translates to Doctors Against Animal Experimentation. Um, and we're going to link down below so everybody can find you. Um, you're in Germany, like I am, in Köln, or for other people, Cologne. Um, yeah. So I want to ask you a few questions about what you do, why you do it, and um, how people can get involved. So animal testing is a huge issue for lots of reasons. What was your personal journey in uh, calling attention to this ugly and controversial issue? Well, thank you, Chris. Uh, well, my personal journey started uh, somewhat negatively. Um, so I studied biology and uh, I wanted also to do a PhD in biology. And uh, when it was time to search for a PhD topic, all the topics that I found uh, at the time contain animal testing. And this invoked this uh, idea in me or this um, uh, impression that you cannot really do biomedical research without animals. Uh, and I also participated in uh, one of these projects. So I, I witnessed animal testing before and I actually, it, it felt very, very uh, cruel to me and very um, unpleasant. But at one point I thought, okay, maybe uh, there is no other way. And just after I finished my uh, PhD thesis, I, um, found a conference organized by Doctors Against Animal Experiments, the organization that I'm working with right now. Uh, and at this conference, I saw so many experts, um, professors, scientists, uh, uh, animal rights activists who uh, explained why animal experiments are not only bad for the animals, but also for the patients and for science in general. And I felt really horrible uh, because uh, I realized that all of these animal experiments were really um, in, for no use um, or for very, very uh, limited use for people. And uh, I um, decided that I will never do any more experiments again. And later, I was very happy to be able to join Doctors Against Animal Experiments. Um, this organization was formed more than 40 years ago in 1979. And um, uh, it was um, found, uh, founded by uh, medical doctors who uh, saw the need uh, to inform the public that the data obtained in animal testing is not uh, reliable or predictable for human patients and that uh, this data can actually cause harm to the patients. Uh, and um, if for these reasons, uh, we are um, oh, we are struggling or we are, uh, we are trying to uh, get the word out that um, animal testing is uh, not uh, beneficial to anybody, uh, maybe only to, to people who build their careers on animal testing, but not really to the patients and not uh, to the general public. And of course, uh, in no case for the animals. And um, uh, since 2019, I'm uh, very happy to be a part of uh, the scientific team of Doctors Against Animal Experiments. And you probably see my animal in the background. There we go. <laughs> uh, uh, she's beautiful. She's a pretty one. So uh, are we having any progress uh, so far since you've joined the organization or since the 40 years that it has been going? Ha have we seen a little bit of improvement as far as people understanding this? Uh, there has been uh, a lot of improvement, uh, but... I have to be honest, things are, we have also very, very uh, strong opposition uh, from the people who are doing animal experiments. So um, we are, we are, 
uh, involved in this unequal fight, <laughs> if you could say. Um, so there has been uh, a lot uh, going on. I think people today are more aware of uh, animal experiments than before. Uh, and also the, there have been uh, many uh, polls in uh, Germany and in Europe uh, showing that the general public wants um, to get rid of animal experiments, just like we do. Um, and um, uh, there are many projects which are developing um, and many models in the scientific community that rely on much more modern and more predictive methods, which are not based on animals, but are based on human samples or human data. Um, so this is uh, definitely a very positive progression that we're seeing. Uh, however, um, the number of animals used in experiments here in Germany has been more or less the same in the last years. So um, what we would like to see next is not only this positive improvement in the area of uh, non-animal testing, but we also want to see a reduction um, of these numbers. And in the best case, of course, uh, we also want to have better laws which uh, prohibit the use of animal testing uh, in Germany and also here in Europe. There have been several laws like this around the world um, and some projects are ongoing. Um, so we are also hoping to see something similar in Germany. Okay. Yeah. And so I want to reiterate, I want to say again for everybody out there that not only is animal testing unethical, but it's also doesn't work because you're not testing on human beings and there are differences between mice and humans or monkeys and humans. Is that true? This is absolutely true. Um, many people do not know this, uh, but all uh, medicines must be tested in at least two animal species before they are uh, tested on human volunteers. And only the medicines that are safe and efficient in these animals, and they usually are tested on much more than two species, um, uh, go forward to uh, human clinical trials. This means to testing in human healthy volunteers and human patients. And from all of these uh, medicines which are safe and effective in um, animals, uh, more than 90% um, do not go to the market after the human trials, either because in most cases they don't work, or because uh, they cause uh, severe side effects, um, which shows that uh, the animal data is in no way predictive um, of uh, the situation in humans. And if we take, uh, for example, the animal testing done for basic research, uh, more than 99% of it uh, is never then um, later um, used in a context of something applicable for human medicine or human patients. So there is a big waste there um, of animal lives, of resources, um, animal, uh, so this also leads to big expenses in the drug development system. So this in big um, inefficiency of uh, the data that, uh, in animal tests, and leads uh, to increased costs for, for the patients at the end because uh, so uh, few drugs uh, at the end effective in people and um, it also um, can bring a real harm to, to human subjects. There are many cases uh, in which uh, drugs that were safe in animals, for example, and in multiple animals in much higher doses than uh, later used in people were um, very dangerous to people. They caused uh, sometimes uh, deadly side effects. And in many more cases, the side effects were uh, not so dramatic that the, the story got in the news, but there were still undesirable side effects and the drugs were still not approved for market use. Um, so this is one very important uh, uh, feature that we want to uh, highlight here, that uh, animal tests really can put people's lives in danger. And also 
Uh, there is the other side that there are many drugs which are potent uh, potentially safe and effective in human, but do not work in animals or can cause side effects in animals. For example, aspirin, paracetamol, ibuprofen are all drugs which were um, tested many years ago, not in the way that uh, drugs are tested systematically in animals today. And if they are tested in animals today, none of these drugs uh, would come to the market because for some animals, they uh, cause side effects which are uh, not seen in the human being. So we do not know how many good drugs we are losing uh, because of animal data. My goodness. So not only are we unethically testing on animals, it doesn't work and we're actually even harming our, the production of medicine and stuff like this and putting ourselves in danger and putting the animals in danger needlessly. That's true. That's incredible. That's incredible. And it seems very stupid. Do you, do you have people that you've worked with and what do you think it is that uh, makes people think, especially scientists who feel like this is uh, ethical or that they, you know, that this is just the way it is. And I just go with the flow. What, what, what stops people from being as empathetic as you? I think there are many people who are empathetic uh, as me, but uh, I think there is uh, not um, a big awareness. So I think a lack of information and lack of awareness are uh, very important. And also the way the system is built. So traditionally, uh, biological sciences and biomedical sciences are somewhat conservative um, and um, mm. in many cases uh, especially for people who have been working with animals since uh, many many years they might be reluctant to change their their ways and uh, the um, yeah the animals that they work with for other systems and also one big problem is that in germany and I suspect in many other places, animal uh, testing is much uh, gets much more money from the government than uh, non-animal testing. So there are not um, official figures. There is complete lack of trans uh, um, of um, uh, transparency in this regard. But uh, in uh, our estimations, more than 99% of uh, government funds for biomedical research go, go toward uh, projects with animal testing and less than 1% go towards projects without animal testing, mm -hmm. uh, which is, of course, a big problem because uh, uh, at the end, uh, people do the research that they get the money for. Ooh. And that's always what I find with academics. Like we like to praise doctors and scientists for doing their thing. But a lot of the research they do, they make sure that they're going to get published. So they make sure that they do whatever the status quo is. And so therefore, we never have any real progress towards, um, you know, doing things the right way. Yes, publishing is also a very, uh, very big factor, especially uh, in academia, because uh, in many cases, uh, that especially uh, in high impact journals, it is very hard to to publish without having animal um, data. So many journals would even require uh, to have animal data so for from people who use non animal methods to do uh, their experiments again in animals. Although this is of course not the correct way to proceed. Actually. Uh, people should strive to go from the situation right now towards a more human-based and non-animal research and not the other way around. Now, I have heard things about in the future, perhaps we can use computers to simulate some of the testing. Is that true? Is that something that could be possible? Uh, yes, this is possible already now. We have many different systems. So by we, I mean the scientific community. Um, there are many different systems. There are computer models, uh, very uh, very developed computer models with artificial intelligence, which can predict if uh, a chemical or a drug is toxic or not, uh, with uh, much uh, better reliability than uh, animal experiments. This has been shown already some years ago. 
And there have been, there are also other models based on human samples and human cells. For example, uh, you could do, um, you could take cells from a patient, for example, for example, blood cells or, or skin cells and, um, uh, use them to produce the so-called uh, induced pluripotent stem cells or a type of stem cells, which you can then um, use to develop small copies of different organs um, of the body. So these are just uh, millimeter or big uh, structures, which are three-dimensional and have many features that the real human organs have. And you can use this for testing many different things. You can test medicines, you can um, analyze um, basic biological processes. And one big advantage is that these um, so-called organoids, um, these mini organs are also personalized. So if um, they do uh, mini um, hearts or mini brains from one patient, they can test the situation or the, the diseases uh, or the reactions in this patient. And if they do it then from another patient, they can find the best drug for the, this other patient, uh, which is in many diseases very, very important because we know that we are all different and we react different to the same chemical, to the same drug. Um, and there is also the possibility to go one step forward and do multiple organoids um, and combine them on a platform a platform called, called organ on a chip. So you can have up to, I think in the moment, up to 15 or 16 different organoids on a chip. Uh, and um, yeah, you can link them with a type of simulated um, circulation that allows them to exchange uh, metabolites and uh, different uh, substances. And you can, for example, you can apply one a drug for, let's say, for um, gut disease uh, to a, a gut organoid and then see what reactions are happening in the liver organoid. So you can also see these complex interactions. And in the moment, these systems are very um uh, very much used in the pharmaceutical industry and uh, in many uh, labs also uh, to analyze uh, relevant biological processes in humans. And, and in the end, it will hopefully be cheaper than animal testing as well. Yes, it is already cheaper. I mean, one, uh, because the animal testing requires um, a lot of um, a lot of time, a lot of space, specialized personnel to um, take care of the animals. It requires, of course, the animals and special machines, and it requires a lot of um, test substances. Whereas in these systems, you can, for example, if it is a computer-based system, of course, uh, you can cut many costs uh, for the lab. Uh, if it is um, uh, organoid based system or this uh, organ on a chip based system, uh, you do not require, you require a very small fraction of the chemicals that you are used um, in the respective animal testing. And the whole systems can be um, automized. So you can do a lot of testing in parallel, which would in animals take months or years. You can do here in weeks. <laughs> Wow. So it is really um, already cheaper. Uh, the thing is, um, it is quite new uh, compared to, to animal testing. So um, in the moment, this field is growing and hopefully there will be many more specialists there um, than there are um, in animal testing. <laughs> and so when we talk about progress and science and stuff, we should always be adopting the newest technologies that are more ethical and more efficient uh, in order to do what we do. But sometimes science moves quite slow. Like you said, it's very conservative a lot of the times because politics is involved. And um, I would call you a hero. I really would. You're, I don't say that about humans too much, but you are a hero. Um, so Working in an organization that's working on behalf of animals, what are some strategies that you're trying to do in order to get the word out there? And how can other people uh, get involved and help you? 
Yeah, so our strategy is uh, first and foremost to inform the public what is happening. Um, so we have um, uh, several campaigns which are um, basically uh, trying to get people's attention on what animal testing um, is there in their cities here in Germany or what animal testing is performed in Germany and how um, unreliable the data is, uh, how um, uh, expensive it is to perform animal experiments and how cruel it is. So the first thing uh, that we try to do is to get people informed and then the people who want to um, uh, support us in the fight against animal experiments, uh, there are different ways to, to support us. They can um, uh, share this information with uh, their friends, with their relatives. They can, um, if they are scientists, of course, there is a very uh, good way to support us is not to do animals, uh, not to do animal experiments themselves. And um, to uh, develop or to work with this non-animal method instead. And um, uh, we are also providing uh, some research grants for um, um, novel and extraordinary uh, animal free research, which uh, relies on these methods, on animal free methods. Uh, and of course, in uh, your everyday life or in the everyday life, everybody can also do some things. Uh, they can uh, sign petitions, for example. They can uh, choose products, which, uh, for example, household items or cosmetic products that um, are not tested on animals. Um, and um, yes, they can also... Uh, um, join us or other animal rights organization fighting animal experiments uh, so that we are more uh, represented also in front of the politicians uh, and hopefully uh, we will bring animal experiments to an end soon. I hope so as well. There's nothing worse than seeing some of these pictures and I encourage everybody to go to the website from these guys and 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 see if you can stomach some of the things that are actually happening. And, um, and other than that, they're all leave some petitions and, and some links in the description and, um, everybody try to get involved and just like, like Dr. Diliana says, just spread the word and let's keep at it. Yes. Thank you so much, Chris. Thank you for coming. I want to, I'll have you back again next year and we'll check on the progress and see if we've made any progress <laughs> in the next year. <laughs> Dr. Diliana Filipova from the Arza Gegen Tierversuchen uh, Institute in Cologne. Thank you so much. Thank you too. Bye.